You saying, Barry, that we're not being ambitious enough? Like, I am, and 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 and, and, and as but listen, as, a, as, a, as an author, as an author of the program for government in in recent years, the the commitment in in that program for government in relation to offshore development was five gigawatts, especially now in the context of the crisis that we find ourselves in all across Europe and the over-dependency on, on Russian gas and so forth. There is an onus of responsibility for Europe as a whole to respond and we can be at the forefront of that. So you're saying... I'm saying we can provide... The green agenda is, within government right I'm now saying is not from ambitious an, enough. I'm saying from an energy perspective, we have at our disposal a €300 billion Euro industry that can be developed, that can be provided, that can be to the forefront of so our economic stopping development. That? Who's stopping that? Well, I'm saying, and I've said it to the Taoiseach in recent weeks, that he should lead the charge at the European summit, which he did, and which he will respond to us next week when he's available to do so, in relation to the commitment that he is seeking and wants to get from our partners in Europe, that Ireland can lead the charge in relation to the provision of a pan-European supergrid right. that leave us with no dependency on the likes of Russian gas into the future. It's as simple as that. A Fianna Fáil in, in green clothing. What do you think of what Barry Cowan has to say? Of the well, plans? I'm not going to join Fianna Fáil, right? If that's what you're asking me. But uh, <laughs> I don't think I don't think to be having me. <laughs> um, exactly. Um, I think you look. I, I think Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael should put their hands up. They have sat on legacy licences for offshore wind for over 20 years. They haven't moved on them. Mm. And what we really need, and we put this into the climate action plan, we need the government to devise a way that we nationalise offshore energy, create a company like we had the ESB in the 1930s and 40s when we electrified the country with a publicly owned, publicly run and uh, owning company. That and a, owning and running that company would point. mean that our natural resources are exploited for our benefit. Okay, so when we not, have not for profit. calling for these applications to open private He's companies He's talking about interested. private developers buying up uh, chunks of the ocean so that they can develop wind energy yeah. and they can make vast You're profits out of it. We should do it I'm ourselves. saying we should do it, the state should do it. Barry, why you you might be answer, you know, Bridge. You know, there might be a gap for you if you're moving in the same direction myself in this issue. But you could form your own. If, 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 like, I mean, owning ESB is not providing cheap electricity in the homes across no, Ireland today. You is it? In, in is, 2001. it? is it? You deregulated in 2001. How much is it worth? When it was the cheapest electricity to the consumers across Europe. How much is it worth? How much is ESB worth? I don't know, but I'm telling you, Barry. It could, it could you, be worth you, enough you, to, you to. It could be worth enough to ensure that we can live up to the expectation and the ambition contained in providing a be, European supergrid and creating... Because you can't, for example, have a situation whereby in this country we can attract the best and the brightest in relation to technology. You can't have Google, TikTok, uh, Microsoft, all these companies saying, you're, you're welcome to Ireland, we, we want you here, we want you to grow here, but we don't want to store your data here. You know oh, I mean? That's the greatest sorry, misnomer sorry, no, hang in this on country. A second, hang but you on need a to provide the energy to... to, to Hang to on ensure a that those data centres have if, a place if this in this is what, If this is what's behind your logic, then uh, shame on you. It's because not. what we're doing in terms of the provision of electricity to data centres is outrageous. Other countries, such as Singapore, uh, Spain, etc., have reduced the amount that they can take you from generate, the national grid. You generate the power. You generate the go, energy that can do be done offshore. They not to go more than and five you and ensure those regions that are left grid. behind okay. presently. And Barry won't let me finish my power. point. We have enough data centres planned with planning permission in this country for it to absorb. 30% of the national grid within 10 years. That so is we need, shameful. Briefly, so we need to, to, so just, we need just, to just increase to the provision of energy uh, to be able to in, house them. In terms of, if we don't, I heard Mary Robinson, if we don't spend our children's money now, our children will have no future. I take it you'd wholeheartedly agree with that. Yeah, I think she's she's exactly on the money and, and uh, she, she put it very well on the Late Late Show, in fact, the other night, making that point. On the data centre thing, if we want to provide data centres, what we do is get that infrastructure that right. Barry described in place first, data centres okay. second, not the other way around. All right, we'll have to leave it there. That's it. Thanks to all my guests. Good night.